Are you sick and tired of having utility bills that are too high? Have you ever thought about adding insulation to your attic? Well, I'm going to give you five reasons on why you should. And if you stay till the end, I'm going to give you a bonus on how you can do it yourself and save some money. So let's get started. Hi everybody, my name is Kess Stadler and I am an associate broker with Atlanta Communities, also known as the Silly Singing Realtor. But today we're talking serious business. Are you tired of seeing your hard earned money go into waste through your attic? Well, a lot of people don't realize the most important thing you can do in your home, your town home, your condo, is insulate the attic. It's just like when you go cold weather camping. I'm a scout leader and we always tell people wear a hat, wear a toboggan of some kind because you lose most of your heat through your head. The same is true for your house. So I'm gonna give you five reasons and some pointers on how you can insulate it yourself or if you don't feel comfortable, at the end I'll show you how you can hire a pro to do it for you. But let's get started by explaining what our value is and what that means. It's basically the thermal resistance. So the higher the R value, the higher the number, the better it will insulate your attic, your walls, your floor, whatever it might be. And the higher the number, the better efficiency it will be, and therefore the more money you'll save. A minimum for your attic, especially here in the South, is an R35, and really they're pushing towards R38 at a minimum. So I'm gonna show you today how you can take a house that has insulation in it but over time it's settled and you can upgrade that if it's a new construction you can always add it it never had it to begin with but keep in mind that i'm giving you two options today there are other ways to do it we're not going to discuss rolled insulation you know the commercials with the pink panther and the pink fiber we're not getting into rolls or bats but we're going to talk about blown insulation today so i'm going to give you the five reasons and then like i said stay till the end where i give you my bonus on how you can do it yourself and save a lot of money Reason number one, fire resistance. If you add insulation to your attic, it helps create a more airtight seal in your home. Therefore, the fire doesn't spread as quickly because it knocks down the oxygen. That's kind of a long story short of it, but it can help with a, as a fire barrier. So that's a really good reason to have uh, extra insulation in your attic. Reason number two, some people don't think about this, especially in the attic, it can help with soundproofing. If you live in a part of the country where you get a lot of rain, wind, possibly hail, things like that, you can hear that when you're upstairs in your bedrooms or wherever you might be in the home. So the insulation helps knock down the sound. It really is just a sound barrier. Reason number three, less condensation. If your home is more airtight and you have the right ventilation in your attic, you won't have much of a moisture buildup. So you want to keep your attic nice and dry and the insulation can help with that. Reason number four, and as a singing realtor, this is one that I always recommend to my clients, it helps with the resale value. So if you're looking to sell, when buyers are looking at a house, if they see that it's got nice fluffy insulation in the attic, that's a bonus. And I will share with you that insulation is, and the R value is based on the thickness of the insulation. So the thicker, the more you have, the better. That's why when you get up in an attic, sometimes you'll see a tape measure basically stapled to the rafters and you'll see a 13, a 15, and that barrier is basically giving you the inches of uh, depth and that gives you an idea of the R value. So if you've ever wondered, when you get up there and it looks like white fluffy clouds, don't push it down, don't knock it down. A lot of my clients will take two by fours and plywood and, in, and basically turn the attic into storage. That's okay, but I only recommend doing about 20% because when you start pushing that insulation down, you're losing and hurting your R value. Reason number five, which is probably the most important and the one that you're most concerned with, it saves you money. You're gonna spend less on your heating and cooling bills and therefore you're gonna save money. So DIY project, you can do it yourself and save money on that end or pay someone to do it. But in the long run, you're gonna save money every month on your utility bills. So definitely keep it in mind and that should be the number one reason that you wanna get more insulation put in your attic. Now we're going to discuss the two types of blown insulation that I'm going to highlight in this video today. One is, uh, everybody's familiar with it, fiberglass. And you know that gives you the itchies if you ever have dealt with it. But just a trick on that, if you ever get fiberglass on your body anywhere, I learned this the other day, take a cold shower. Don't take a hot shower because when you take a hot shower, it opens the pores to your skin and the fiberglass just sticks in those pores. So the secret is take a cold shower and then take a rag or something and wipe your arms, your hands, your face, whatever, wipe it off. It'll close the pores and then the fiberglass will come off instead of embedding into your pores. So that's just a little trick. 
that uh, it really works because I did this, you'll see in the pictures, I did a, a video and I did this in one of my properties and I tried that and I didn't have the itchies after that. So fiberglass blown in is excellent. It's a good fire retardant. It's an excellent R value or it offers an excellent R value. So that's really the way to go. Most professionals do that. If you're gonna do a DIY, I would recommend more of the other brand, which is cellulose type material. It's a blown insulation, but cellulose is made up of 85% newspaper, cardboard, particle board, all those type things. So it's much more earth friendly and it's user friendly. If you've ever done insulation with the pink stuff, you gotta have mask, gloves, the whole nine yards. With the cellulose, you don't have to have that. One last thing with the, the cellulose blown in insulation, don't get the kind that has formaldehyde or also mineral fibers. You don't need any of that. So just a, a little DIY trick. As a real estate broker over the years, uh, with my 25 years experience, I've learned what works, what doesn't, and what to stay away from. So personally, if you're doing it yourself, I would recommend the cellulose, but either option is a good one. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a whole string of pictures. One will be this uh, cute little ranch that I owned as a rental property with my wife. And my father and I, when we were getting ready to sell it two years ago, we realized that when we were in the back bedrooms, the air conditioning wasn't working. It was on, but it wouldn't stay cool. You could put your hand up to the ceiling and just feel the heat pouring in. And as you'll see in some of these pictures, there's a reason why. There was basically no insulation in there. So I'm gonna walk you through briefly the steps on how to uh, do it yourself. You just need two people at a minimum, and I would recommend you do it either early in the morning or in the winter months, because when you get up there in the summer, it is 180 degrees in that attic, and you will lose five pounds, 10 pounds of water weight within an hour. So let me start off by showing you this ranch that we just completed. It was about 1,200 square foot ranch, and we bought the supplies from Home Depot, and my father and I did it ourselves. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the how it works because I know a lot of my clients like to know that and I consider myself a full-service real estate broker not only am I good at marketing and selling homes and helping my clients but I also give some good information on how to fix up your home once you live in it or getting it ready to sell and this is one of the big things I always tell my clients add insulation to the attic it's the number one place to add insulation people talk about windows uh, doing the crawl space windows are a second and wall insulation would be third but the number one thing you can do is the attic insulation so let's get started with the DIY project that I did with my dad. The pitch on the roof was very shallow. It was about a three one pitch, they call it. So I didn't have a lot of headroom as you'll see in some of these pictures. But this first picture shows you the bags that we purchased. You can see the fiber, that's the cellulose material. That's just the first group of bags that I bought. I had to go back and buy more. It doesn't go very far, but you wanna add it in thick. When you're up there, you might as well go ahead and pile it in pretty thick because you don't want to have to get in there again. So what we did is we set up the bags outside and then as you'll see from this next picture, look at that mess. <laughs> That's a huge mess. But we did this in a bedroom off the pull down stairs and you'll see in this picture we insulated the underside of the pull down stairs just because that's where you lose a lot of your energy as well. And we did this in a room that didn't have carpet yet so then we could sweep and vacuum and then lay down the carpet and it just made it easier on us. But this is the machine that you can uh, rent from Home Depot or Lowe's or any of the big box stores. And uh, at the end, I'll tell you a bonus on how you can get that for free. So this is kind of what the apparatus looks like. If you look in the corner of that picture, you'll see a fan. We put a fan in that window blowing out just because the dust is pretty strong. Ideally, if you can, put this outside and have someone feed it. But we decided to cheat because it was pretty hot outside and did it in a bedroom. All right, here you see in this next picture, that just shows you some of the debris. When you're up in the attic and you're moving, you don't really have time to clean up. So my dad would feed that green machine and then I would be up in the attic blowing it in. And then he'd feed it and then blow it in. When he ran out, he would turn it off. I would know to wait and he'd go get another bag. The one thing that's kind of funny is that machine's loud and you have to wear hearing aids or earplugs when you're doing it. So if I needed my dad to turn it off or I needed a break, I'd have to call him on my phone or text him and then he would shut the machine down because there's no way you can communicate. And if you're doing this in a two-story, three-story house, you're gonna have somebody in the attic, somebody in the driveway, it's practically impossible. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, you see me here, I'm peeking through some of the insulation and the duct work. This is when I was getting started, getting ready to put that mask on and uh, my dad took that picture just saying, hey, go for it because he knew how hot it was gonna be. And so I'm getting all donned up and ready to go. And you notice I don't have on any special equipment on my arms or my shirt because I'm using the cellulose material. If I've been using fiberglass insulation, I would have been covered a little bit more. 
but I probably wouldn't have done it that time of year because it was June or July when we did this. This picture says it all. This is what it looked like the first time I went up there. Those rafters, you should not be able to see them at all. And you can see by this picture, there's really no insulation whatsoever. So that gives you an idea of what we were starting at. You'll see later in the video, I have a home that already had insulation. We topped it off. But this, there's a reason that back bedroom was hot. There's no insulation. So this is the before picture. Then this is during as I'm trying to work my way back and blow in some insulation, kind of getting used to how the machine works. And you can see we're starting to add in a little bit here. And then this is uh, the end result back in that back corner. So you go all the way to the very back and then start working your way back out. Because once you get that insulation in, you never want to touch it again. That's another tip. If you're going to do phone work or lighting, if you're going to put in ceiling fans, overhead lights, anything like that, run cable, run speaker wires, do it before you put in the insulation. Once your insulation's in, you really don't want to go back up there again. Two reasons. One, you're going to knock down the R value by stepping on it. And the second, most important, is you might fall through. <laughs> you definitely don't want to fall through. All right, as we keep moving along, you can see here in this next picture, we were adding the insulation to the sides. As you see where the eaves and soffits meet, um, to the left of that picture, there is uh, an air gap. You need to see daylight all around the edge of the house and also your ridge vents or your soffit vents because the attic has to breathe. If you blow that insulation all the way up into those corners and the attic can't breathe, if you can't see any daylight anymore, then you need to move that because the attic needs to have ventilation. That is so important. Otherwise, it's just going to stay really hot and it's going to burn your shingles and it's going to keep the house a lot hotter than it needs to in the summer. So definitely be careful and when you see the around the edge, if you're in the attic and you can see daylight, you want to keep that. Here's some more of those pictures where you can see the insulation further on the left of that picture. It's blown in and we're working our way out. Ideally in this house, we wound up with about an R30, R35. That did such a world of difference. When I came back down and we turned on the air conditioning, quickly it cooled down the house and it stayed cool in those back bedrooms. So that's very important. All right, you see in this picture, I'm shining my flashlight. A lot of cobwebs we had to clean up, but past that flashlight is where the eaves and the soffits would be, and you want those vents open. I can't stress that enough. You need to make sure you don't blow insulation down into those corners. And here you go. This is one of the final pictures. Look at that thick insulation. And I kept blowing after that, but you can see it went from nothing to where it's completely covering the whole house. It made a huge difference. And of course, I had to take a selfie while I'm up there. It's modern technology. Um, and that mass was soaking wet. I was filthy, but we got it done. It was a DIY project. I'm a real estate agent and broker by trade, but I'm also a handyman. I own a bunch of rentals and I knew we could do this. And I got to some, spend some time with my dad, who's a retired general contractor. So it was, it was fun. And then there's a proud father-son moment. He, uh, he was more covered than I was with the cellulose material because every time he dumped something in that green hopper, dust just flew everywhere. So we were uh, just a glut for punishment, the two of us. But we got it done. We went and had some coffee and, and rehydrated with about a gallon of water each. So that's how you can DIY. You can do it yourself. And if you have any questions at the end, call me, email me, put in the comments if you try to do this. I'd love to know. And oh, by the way, don't forget, subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to grow the channel and help other homeowners and also my friends. So subscribe to it and like it and be sure to share it. I'd really appreciate that. I'm trying to give good advice. And then I'll also tell you information about the real estate market here in Metro Atlanta and all over Georgia. And then also some of my videos have to deal with certain neighborhoods and certain parts of town and uh, the commute because Atlanta is known for really bad commutes. And then I get into some schools, just an overall idea about living in Metro Atlanta. Hey, you like that? <laughs> happens to be the title of my YouTube channel, but living in Metro Atlanta. So I get some good advice. If you don't feel comfortable DIYing this project, then you can hire the professionals. And I have a, a property under contract right now that one of the inspection requirements was to blow more insulation in the attic. It had about an R20 and the buyers wanted R35. So in that case, we hired a professional to come in and he's an old friend of mine. I've sent him a lot of business and he allowed me to kind of videotape him. So I'm gonna show you some of the things and how he did this. And more importantly, the contraption and the device that he uses in the driveway to be able to do this on his own. He's a one-man shop for this job, which is amazing. No video would be complete without a selfie 
All right, so here's the machine that my friend uses. As you can tell, a professional. You saw the green box that I had for my DIY ranch. This is just a bigger version of it. And he loads up the hopper. He's using a fiberglass insulation, as you can see on the front of the trailer. And he fills up about five bags. He's got a remote control with it. Then he climbs up in the attic, turns it on, and it feeds the system. And then when he's run out of insulation, turns it off, adds five more bags, and does it again. All right, here is the long tube that he uses, and I've got a video where you can see the insulation floating through it. That's how you get the insulation up there, whether it's the green machine I use or this one, that's how it gets done. And you'll see at the end, uh, he just used his hand to kind of fluff the insulation out. All right, so here we have the insulation. He's topping off what was in there, and you can see this is about an R40 by the time he was done. Look how thick that is. This is a much newer home. Look at the pitch on that roof. You can stand up in this one. It was a, probably a nine by 12, a nine over 12 pitch, or they call it a nine pitch. So it was pretty steep. It's one of those that if you're gonna do roof work, you hire a professional, cause you'll slide right off. All right, this is my buddy Joe, and here he is adding the insulation into the attic. And he's just using his hand to kind of filter and to, to force the insulation where he wants to go. And just like I did in the ranch, he started in the far in the back and then worked his way towards the pull down stairs and blow in as you go. And it's kind of like painting yourself into a corner. You want to insulate yourself into a corner. A few more pictures of the end product. You can see where he left the eaves and the soffits open. You can almost see daylight there. So he didn't blow it over the edge and down into the walls of any anywhere near that. And then you see how deep that is. That's about two feet deep. So the insulation and the R value, that's gonna be there a long time. So the new homeowners that are moving in next week are gonna be super happy. Summers are gonna be a little bit cooler in the house. And then in the winter's a little bit warmer. So you can't ask for more. All right, so I showed you a bunch of pictures. We did the ranch and the, the DIY and then the professional. And then at the end, I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna put a couple of videos together. Just watch these videos on how the process actually works with that machine. And just remember whether you hire someone to do it professionally or you get that green machine from Home Depot, this is how the process works. And I appreciate you staying till the end. One thing I did wanna tell you, I told you I'd give you a bonus. That green machine that you saw, the blower, they will give you for free for the day if you you buy the fiberglass or the cellulose insulation bags from them. Home Depot, Lowe's, most of the big box stores, if you buy all the insulation from them, they'll let you borrow that machine for the day. It's pretty heavy. You're going to need a trailer or a pickup truck, but you can do it yourself. And if you don't want to buy your insulation from them, Home Depot's $200 for the day. Lowe's is probably the same, but uh, I just buy it there and you're good to go. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned a little bit. I'm here to help you in any way you need. If you're thinking about moving to Metro Atlanta or have any questions, or you've done this project yourself, comment below. I want to know what happened, how you did it. And most importantly, don't fall through if you get up there and do it yourself. That's always a bonus. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned. If you want to get information on other DIY projects, like I've got one video on how to caulk an undermount sink, check out my channel. Or if you're thinking about moving to Atlanta and you want a relocation package, I offer those for free. I can put one in the snail mail for you or send it to you as a PDF. So thanks again. I appreciate you tuning in. And as I said in the beginning, I am the singing realtor. La da 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 da. <laughs> So take care, have a great day, and check out my next video, and we'll see you soon.